there's a pretty big difference between outfitting a regular man-at-arms and a noble European knight. And that difference is sometimes estimated to be more than $3 million. Knights are some of the most legendary warriors in history. But while we can imagine how it felt to ride into battle wearing metal and on an equally armored horse, the actual cost of this kind of protective wear was incredibly expensive when it was popular and would be even more expensive now. Here's everything you need to know about the cost of a knight's armor, from the medieval times to today. Warriors today look understated when compared to the knights of the past. While countries like the US still spend billions of dollars on military costs, for example, about $934 billion in the 2020-2021 fiscal year, the cost of outfitting one fighter in a plate of well-constructed armor would be astounding. English medieval knights wore metal armor made out of iron or steel to protect themselves from their opponents. The strong metal plating was particularly effective against longswords and archers. While the trend of wearing chainmail started around the 9th century, full plates of armor started to become popular and more widespread in the 14th and 15th centuries. But because of how expensive it could be to create, its popularity only lasted for a relatively short time. Let's look at the cost of armor in the context of outfitting a member of the military today. In the US, it costs about $500 for a basic military uniform. Instead of horses, we use military vehicles like Jeeps, which can cost more than $500,000 each, but can accommodate more people than a single knight's horse. In England in the 15th century, Typical imported Milanese armor would cost about five or six pounds. That was equivalent to about 100 to 166 days wages. We can convert that to today by looking at the average yearly salary of a US Army corporal, which is about $30,000 a year or $2,500 per month or about $83 per day without time off. Depending on the type, quality, finishing, and where the armor was made, a set of 15th century plate armor would cost anywhere from $8,000 to $40,000 for the more high-end stuff. For a regular foot soldier, the cost would be lower, but still pretty expensive, from $2,000 to $4,000. But the price difference between a regular man-at-arms plate armor and a knight's plate armor is huge. For one, a knight's armor was made to order by renowned armorers and would often include expensive decals and decorations. Even the typical combat armor for a knight could cost between $100,000 and $250,000. If a knight was really celebrated, came from a noble family and enjoyed the finer things in life, then his armor could be worth $500,000. That's a lot of money to wear into battle. Some researchers even say the price of some of the armor worn by European knights could go up to $3.5 million today, when including armor for horses and weapons. And this is especially likely when you take into account ceremonial armor versus combat armor. So what is it exactly that makes armor so expensive? Well, think of it as similar to buying a very expensive suit. And the cost depends on a few factors. The first is whether the armor was made for the wearer or bought as is, and sometimes even used. Armor was often pre-made and then adjusted after purchase, which is a lot less expensive than a custom-made suit of armor for a noble knight. The second factor is the armorer who made the product. Of course, if you buy Gucci, it's going to be more expensive than Gap. Where the armor was manufactured also comes into play. And as we mentioned before, imported Milanese armor was pretty popular. The price also took into consideration the kind of finish and decoration used in the armor. In the 16th century, the cost of the gold for gilded armor could be worth more than several plates of armor suitable for a knight. What was included in armor also changed as the centuries passed by. And as armor became more detailed, it also became more expensive. Basic armor consisted of long mail reaching the knees and usually had sleeves as well as a coif. The front and back of the mail had cuts taken out of it to facilitate easier movement and to allow its wearer to sit comfortably in a saddle. Under the armor, knights often wore gambeson and hose, also made of mail. In the late 13th century, a combination of chain mail and a coat of plates became popular to better protect the wearer. These pieces of armor often included cloth, quilted linen, and sometimes leather. In the 14th century, a larger curved breastplate was implemented because it was harder to penetrate with pointy weapons like spears. A placard and falds covering the stomach also became popular, as well as a full cuirass. Due to its high cost, cuirasses were available to nobles and very few knights. The cost of an entire armory of an English knight was valued in 1374 at over 16 pounds. 
which might not seem like much, but equaled about five to eight years of rent on a London merchant's house. It would cost a skilled laborer three years of wages to be able to afford an armory of this standard. Just one single helmet was equal to the price of a cow. So armor definitely wasn't common for the commoner. And the more money and better reputation you had, the more likely you were as a knight to be able to receive the best protection and the most decorative suit of armor. As armor manufacturing became even more skilled, it ushered in the golden age of armor in the 15th century. All of these styles became even more popular, and there was a lot of mixing and matching of different elements. There were closed and open helmets with a variety of differently constructed visors. There were also bracers, arm harnesses, kneecaps, and greaves. Plate armor became way more accessible thanks to advances in metalworking and became more popular among knights and even infantry. It was during this period that we also started to see the suits of armor as we know them best. Shining exposed metal without the many layers of fabric. This type of armor was often called a white harness. It was during these years that armor really reached its peak in innovation and effectiveness. Armorers focused on the form of the wearers, and knights at this time were often referred to as steel sculptures. But of course, when we think of epic armor and knights riding into battle, we aren't thinking of the typical man-at-arms, who often wore cheaper and less effective protection. Their suits were also not nearly as flashy. Some of the ways knights would decorate their armor and stand out from the crowd was with embossed designs like a coat of arms. Crusader knights were also known for wearing crosses. One young nobleman's full cost to equip himself was often out of range of the typical man-at-arms. A nobleman's suit of armor could be equal to 8 to 16 months of wages for the less fortunate. In the 15th century, the price of mail also rose, and it became less popular to make. And because plate armor made them unnecessary, shields also fell out of style. But not every single knight had to be incredibly rich if they were also skilled. A knight could always rent a suit of armor or even win one by defeating an opponent. These competitions were done at medieval tournaments, but sometimes even in actual battle. And of course, we have to keep in mind that to keep their armor in tip-top shape, it had to be constantly cared for. The knight squire would be in charge of regularly cleaning and polishing it, and those who did not have a squire would have to take those duties upon themselves. It's also important to mention that armor quality had to be tested before it was able to be worn on the battlefield. And one of the most interesting ways they did this in the 15th century was by firing bullets at it. A low-quality suit of armor, no matter how decorative, could quickly find its way to ruin if it wasn't up to the task. You can buy yourself decorative suits of armor today based on the real thing, but they can cost you anywhere between $2,000 and $8,000 or more, depending on how they're made and what they're modeled after. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.